An excerpt from Zombie Turkeys. Chapter 1. Bartonville. He felt different, more energetic, more alive. He bred with female after female in his flock without tiring. He stayed awake through the night. He feared no predator. Then a turkey hunter shot him. The setting sun overlooked a crisp, clear evening in early November. South of Bartonville, Illinois, a farmer had leased his woodlot to two turkey hunters. Big and burly in their bulky camouflaged outfits, they had just bagged one. Good shot, Pete! He's a biggin'. Pete and Bob walked up to the tom turkey, bleeding on the cold ground. The rest of the flock had scattered into the woods. He had exceptionally good plumage and weighed perhaps 20 pounds. Pete reached down and picked him up by the neck. He weighs at least 25 pounds! Then the turkey's eyes opened and gleamed red. He kicked with his spurs and pecked savagely at Pete's arms and eyes. Dozens of his hens attacked the men from behind. Gobble, gobble! He felt different, more energetic, more alive. He had no memory of being shot, but a certain turkey satisfaction at killing his killers. He also enjoyed pecking at their dead meat. He had always liked frogs, but this meat tasted better. He led his flock down the road in search of more predators to eat. Vince Thorne was chopping wood early in the morning when the turkeys came upon him. Gobble, gobble! They called by the hundreds as they flew over his fence. He wailed on them with his axe, dispatching several of them. More and more swarmed at him. He used his baseball hitting skills to get the ones going for his face, but they encircled him, attacking him from the back and sides. Running into his tool shed, he got his chainsaw started and stood at the door, mowing them down as they came at him. This went on for about 15 minutes, long enough for him to build a three-foot wall of sawn turkey pieces in front of him. As suddenly as the turkeys came, they left, although the remaining corpses had the annoying habit of getting back up and staggering toward him. In this way, he learned he had to saw them cleanly in half to kill them for good. Gobble, gobble! Hundreds of turkeys got into Prince Bill's Piggly Wiggly grocery store through the cart return door. Most of the early morning shoppers fled in panic. The manager, John Friedling, used a fire extinguisher to good effect, both in spraying and suffocating them and in bashing them over their heads. Another employee chopped them up using a fire axe in the frozen food section. The resident butcher chimed in with his largest cleaver. Blood splattered everywhere. When the turkeys had been driven from the store and the manager thought the attack had been thwarted, the corpses arose. Back came the axe and the cleaver. This time they made sure the pieces were bite-sized. Phew, I just about lost it when they got up again, John said. Yeah, some didn't even have their heads, Nathan Block, the butcher, replied. At least that made them easier to kill, again. They ran around like turkeys with their heads cut off. Uh-oh, Nathan said. Now what? Look in the fresh turkey section in the cooler over there. Under the fresh turkeys for Thanksgiving sign, struggling to get out of their plastic wrappings, which had been pierced by turkey spurs during the battle, the fresh turkeys wriggled in the refrigerator. All had been covered in blood from the zombie turkeys. One managed to get free of the string wrapped around its legs and lay on its back, vigorously waving the stumps of its legs in the air. Headless, footless, it looked ridiculous, like a turkey-sized slug. Even as they watched, the wings started waving and the stumps of the drumsticks sprouted buds, which blossomed into feet. Black dots appeared all over the turkeys, which began growing into feathers. A head was slowly sprouting from the chopped neck. Chop! Nathan split one from stem to stern. Fresh giblets flew everywhere. Chop! John hacked one in half with a fire axe. After dispatching the other wrigglers, John said, I guess they're past their expiration date. I don't think we can sell these. Warren Zapp, a Gulf War veteran, returned home from the night shift at Caterpillar that morning. He bent his broad back and picked up the morning paper, the Midley Beacon, on his way into his house when he heard gobble gobble from hundreds of turkeys flying into his yard. He quickly ducked into his house and slammed the door on them. Thump! Thump! Scores of turkeys hit the doors and windows like gigantic paranormal hail. That's enough of that, he said grimly to himself. 
He went into his basement and got his somewhat illegal AK-47 that he had captured in Baghdad during the war in 2003. He had plenty of ammo, too. He lifted the second-story window and opened fire on the hundreds of turkeys in his yard. I suppose this counts as a predation permit, he said as he reloaded a 50-round drum. Not sure the police would approve it within the city limits. That's fine. They can come arrest me. Dozens of Warren's neighbors had already called the police, not just because of the shooting of the automatic weapon. They, too, had hundreds of turkeys in their yards. The police, however, were busy fighting the turkeys in the town square with shotguns, handguns, and rifles. The turkeys went down by the hundreds and slowly came back up, bloody but unbowed and undeterred. After Warren had cleared his yard for the second time and saw the turkeys rising yet again, he raged. No, you don't. You don't defeat a U.S. Marine that easily. He went into his attached garage and filled mason jars and old liquor bottles with gas. He tore up a shirt and put a strip of cloth in each, screwing it on with the top. When he had several dozen, he went back to his second floor window, lit the gas-soaked cloths, and threw them at the turkeys. Each exploded into a ball of flame when it hit, splashing them with flaming gasoline. Fire and being burned alive got through to the turkeys. They left his yard, even the resurrected ones that were not much more than bleeding balls of feathers. Oh ho, you don't like that? There's more where that came from. The guardsmen on cordon duty whispered to each other while they watched the riverside with night vision goggles. Whoa, do you see that? Yeah. Thousands of turkeys coming through the woods towards us. I think we need reinforcements. Well, duh, of course. Calling his sergeant, he said, Sarge, we've got several thousand turkeys headed towards our position on the Illinois River. We won't be able to hold them off. Can you get some support for us? I'll send up a squad of 10 rocket launchers. When will they be here? In 15 minutes. The turkeys will be here in five. So hold them off for 10 more minutes. You have flechette launchers and flamethrowers with you. Okay, but if we die due to turkeys, I'll come back from the dead and haunt you. If you die due to turkeys, it'll be because you're a turkey. See you soon, Private Cowper. Sergeant Smith, out. The flechette launchers put holes in the turkey advance, but the flamethrowers really stopped them cold. Or hot. The zombie turkeys gathered outside the circle of flames around the soldier's position, their red eyes gleaming. The burnt turkeys and the napalm-fueled fire glowed like coals in hell. Then the cavalry arrived. That was the 1st Cavalry Division of the U.S. Army, who had arrived in Joliet the previous day. Now they came west of Spring Valley and their Hummers and Bradley fighting vehicles. The Bradley's 25mm cannon opened up. A previously secret anti-personal, in this case anti-turkey, round of four flechette in each 25mm round turned the masked turkeys into red mist. A few minutes later, dozens of soldiers, piling out of the vehicles, opened up with their shoulder-mounted flechette rockets. Soon, the 2,000 turkeys turned to red mud flowing into the river. Men, fix bayonets go through the turkey's position and look for survivors. If you find any, split them in two. Several dozen soldiers ran to do the gory task. 